All right. Welcome once again to the Beats Love PDX official news break. I am your host, Beatzilla, PDX officially. And today we have a little something to talk about, about Tiffany Cross. We're going to call today's broadcast the Tiffany Cross crossover. And what she's doing is something that we are seeing a lot here recently from the Democrats. What they are doing is acting as if this black voter base has no sense or, uh, you know, any understanding of the political set uh, landscape right now as, as it stands. So they're kind of treating us as if we're ignorant for lesser, you know, <laughs> for lesser, uh, uh, lesser terms or words rather. So with that being said, Tiffany Cross is going out here, as you see on the screen, she has a, a broad, well, you know, she did her MSNBC show. So again, this is a fair use. That's why I showed that already. I will not be playing the video, but as you see in the screenshot, I will be playing the audio from this particular broadcast. And there's some things that jumped out at me. There are some things that most definitely were concerning um, about this particular uh, clip. So with that being said, we're gonna get right on into it. Please hit the like and share button. If you have not already subscribed to this channel, you should do so right now. So you will be notified anytime that this channel goes live. But if you do that, that means you got you have hit the notification bell as well and hit the word all. So you'll get these broadcasts as well as the live ones, as well as uh, notifications in my community tab. So with that being said, let's take a listen to uh, Miss Tiffany Cross. Connection. I am, of course, Tiffany Cross, and we have a lot to discuss this morning, from Donald Trump's legal woes with the Justice Department to the proposed prisoner swap that could potentially bring WNBA star Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan back home. But we have to begin with the midterm elections now just 101 days away. Get this, in the latest Gallup poll, at least half of Americans are more enthusiastic about voting in the upcoming midterms than in previous elections. But what exactly does this tell us about young voters? Voters. Many of them are fed up, but it doesn't mean they're sitting this out this November. Let's take a look back at the 2020 election where young voters had a record turnout. Now, according to Tufts University, half of the young voters hit the polls in 2020. And this November, that number could increase as young voters are fired up by political issues, like, of course, the Supreme Court's latest ruling on abortion. A lot is at stake this fall, yet in a new poll, more than half of AAPI voters say they've never been contacted by any political party, and this is despite being the fastest growing demographic in this country. Shameful. Joining me. Now, no, well, that, that's somewhat true that they're the fastest growing demographic. However, what you're doing is aiding them. So you are making them so uh, be a, a buffer class and what this is saying is basically the buffer class is not reciprocating to the Democrats. And uh, literally, they're saying no one. And why would they? Why would the AAIP take any position when they identify as white? And then also, they're benefiting from the people of color line. See, Black folks lose in the AAIP thing all around. So why is Tiffany Cross talking about young voters and then Roe v. Wade? Not justice, not reparations. See, Roe v. Wade is not the conversation in the black community at all. Reparations and justice is. So when you hear somebody like Tiffany Cross, that's why they have three black women on the screen one Asian woman. The Asian woman represents white people. And she's there because you'll 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 get this message in uh further further down the line, which again I just want you to know that there is no such thing as a people of color coalition. So check this out. 
is Lynn Wynn. She's the executive director of Run AAPI, Latasha Brown, co-founder of Black Voters Matter, and of course, Erin Haynes, editor-at-large for the 19th and MSNBC political contributor. Very happy to have you ladies here. Erin and Latasha, you look very tanned and nice this morning. Happy to see you again. Uh, Latasha, I want to kick it off with you. Uh, you're on the ground. Very tan. Wow. <laughs> so the sisters are very tan. Hmm. Real quick, I'll show you the steel shot. Yeah, that's what she's talking about. Very tan. All right. moving in communities all over this country. And so I'm curious, what's your consensus about engagement when it comes to the people? Are they hype and ready once again to battle voter suppression and, and hit the polls? Uh, or will it take some convincing from community validators to get people engaged? And I just want to point out that someone... Mm. Did you catch that? I'm going to go back if you didn't. Tanned and nice this morning. Happy to see you again. Uh, Latasha, I want to kick it off with you. Uh, you're on the ground moving in communities all over this country. And so I'm curious, what's your consensus about engagement when it comes to the people? Are they hype and ready once again to battle voter suppression and, and hit the polls? Uh, or will it take some convincing from community validators to get people engaged? And I just want to point out that someone tweeted me this morning and said it's really not about enthusiasm when it comes to voting. It's about motivation. So I'm curious your thoughts on that as well. Okay. Now, what this next woman is finna do is going to be the typical uh, Democratic shield talking point maneuver. Now, back up, though. The question Vote, uh, voter suppression. There hasn't been any conversation in black circles. Matter of fact, if people are doing Twitter spaces, there's not one Twitter space talking about voter suppression. Matter of fact, um, you had Marcel Dixon running. No one spoke on voter suppression when it came down to him. Matter of fact, they just celebrated Clyburn as if, oh, well, he's Clyburn is so great all of a sudden. Well, it seems like there was no problem with the vote with uh, Jim Clyburn. What, what are we talking about now? Because that's South Carolina. You have Herschel Walker. And uh, so either way it goes. Governor or, or uh, let's see. Well, not necessarily for, um, <laughs> not George. You're probably still going to have a white governor. But for that seat um, that has been given up by, I believe, the death of John Lewis. Is that right? Uh, the Georgia seat that either can go to Warnock or Herschel Walker. So you're going to be black in that seat either way. Uh, and some could argue one's a Republican, one's a Democrat. I see the same person, just wrapped a different way. Um, with that being said, there is no voter suppression when it comes down to foundation of black Americans. The only suppression is of foundational black Americans agenda. There's the suppression. So she's talking about voter suppression. Well, we are the voters. You're suppressing our voice, media. And this is MSNBC. They're trying to do the black validation thing. But watch this pivot. Yeah, you know, the, the saying hype, they're not hype. But what they are is they're pissed off that what we're seeing is that we're seeing young voters who are extremely frustrated with what is happening from gas prices to actually from seeing the Republicans attack from voter suppression across the board. And so I do think that. Young folks are worried about gas prices and Republicans voter suppression across the board. How did you make that connection for young voters? So, OK, black, <clears throat> black America. This woman is coming out here to lie on you. <laughs> like I said, when all else fails, lie. And this is where they are just simply act with it. But they'll get to the meat of the reason why. Listen. 
the tweet that you received today, that encapsulizes that at the end of the day, people are frustrated and frustration can actually lead to motiv motivation. You know, I think the Republicans, as they always do, I think this time they went too far. That now we're back into the Republican downplay. Gas prices are the way they are because of Joe Biden. However, that's not the first thing that comes out of black people's mouths, nor is guns, nor is Roe v. Wade. No, the very first thing and topic of conversation. That's why our group, our black representatives that speak for the soil have been trending for the last three weeks on Twitter. Not everybody else and the line that they like to always feel. No, that's not catching traction. What we are saying is catching traction because what we are saying is of the people. And this is of the powers that should not be. This was an election cycle. This is a midterm election that normally, you know, normally they would be going in with an advantage. I actually believe that they're going in with a disadvantage. And young voters, I think, are all, they're going to make the difference in this next election cycle. We're at the beginning, I believe, of a new 40-year uh, cycle, political cycle, where you're going to see younger, they're younger voters, they're more informed. Some of them are informed, you know, with, with the correct information because of social media platforms. Some of them are getting information that is not correct, but they're more informed, which means that did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? You you understand when they say stuff like that, um, especially out of Tiffany Cross's broadcast, when they make the reference to um, social media news, that means new black media. So that's what they're talking about when you hear them say that on MSNBC. So we are who they are talking about, man. these voices of new black media. Um, and of course, these people watch us down to the smallest platform because they need to get their information from the people. But they're so detached from society, uh, foundational black American society, because the majority of these people are not foundational black Americans. I don't think anybody on the screen really is. Um, Tiffany Cross, possibly, I, I think she's actually Caribbean. Um, nonetheless, Let's hear more of this, because again, how they're setting this up, you, you are noticing who's talking right now, but they're talking about AAIP and young voters, and young voters will change the next 40 years of voting. Now, with that being said, watch Tiffany Cross's pivot. They're more engaged, and I think they're going to be more engaged this election cycle. You know, Lynn, I think Latasha makes a good point because social media does play such a big role, particularly when it comes to young constituents, which is why it's so disheartening that so many members of the API community have not been contacted by either uh, political party. The same can be said for Latino voters, uh, and certainly this extends to indigenous voters uh, as well, and certainly black voters have our own uh, collective issues. But Whoa. You see how she just did that? She put everybody else's issues with extra emphasis. And when it got to black people, well, whatever that is. All of these have, have issues. Have, well, black people, yeah, we have our issues. I mean, yeah, we're not really going to talk about that. I mean, we're black people. You see how they're doing us? This is a enemy, family. And this is how you identify it. Yeah, they're black. Yeah, they're on TV, but you can't come over here with a person doing this, talking to us as if we're doing wrong for calling them out for doing madness like this. This is absolutely foul. And this is going to go even further. So now you just heard her downplay the black community's issues while she has two other black women on her panel. Let's see why they needed to put black women up on this panel. What are we doing here? Well, let's find out. 
it is a frustrating process that I see, that there still seems to be this effort to censor white voices uh, and a lot of conservative white voices even that, quite frankly, have left the Democratic Party a long time ago. What do you make? Whoa, what's her main concern here? Uh, let's hear that again. I don't know if you caught that trading process that I see, that there still seems to be this effort to censor white voices uh, and a lot of conservative white voices even that, quite frankly, have left the Democratic Party a long time ago. What do you mean? Dog whistle. Tiffany Cross crossover. Dog whistle. Sadie, we're looking out for you. Oh, man, you conservative white voices. Who are getting silenced? Oh, never mind the black ones that are consistently shadow banned. Uh, we, we have to denounce publicly Minister Farrakhan. You got everybody apologizing for dealing with another black man. That's crazy. But here you go talking about conservative white men, as if maybe you are referring to those January sixers. Sixers. I mean, because who else are you talking about? Isn't that the crowd? So take note of what the Democrats are doing. They are pandering not to black women this time, but to, matter of fact, let me, just, let me, let me show you something. <laughs> this is, so, so let, me, let me just, let me go back, just to give you some perspective here. Look at the screen. Just watch the screen and listen. Effective issues, but it is a frustrating process that I see that there still seems to be this effort to censor white voices uh, and a lot of conservative white voices, even that, quite frankly, have left the Democratic Party a long time ago. What do you? And became Republican. Are you catching what the hell she just said? The those white conservative voices who left the Democratic Party a long time ago. This woman is literally calling for the Klan. If you do not understand what she just said, that is a dog whistle to white supremacists. This woman is evil, man. And Tiffany Cross has crossed over. She is all the way on the other side. No coming back. When you start doing this, you are as bad as that tether that came over here talking about uh, Clarence Thomas's uh, ancestors and the KKK. Man, no. No, no, no. Mm -mm. That's why I want this picture on the screen. Get a good look. I'm going to play this one more time. Because when people say, hey, y'all are hating on Tiffany Cross. Uh-uh. Uh, political party. The same can be said for Latino voters, uh, and certainly this extends to indigenous voters uh, as well, like and Enrique certainly Tarrios. black voters have our own uh, collective issues. But it is a frustrating process that it's I see, that there still seems to be this effort to censor white voices, mm. uh, and a lot of conservative white voices even, mm. that quite frankly have left the Democratic Party a long time ago. What do you make of AAPI voters continuing <laughs> to be ignored by both parties? I mean, I, Tiffany, I'm not surprised. I'm not. And we did a poll. This was late in 2021. Okay. Uh, real quick, family, I have to show you this because you guys got to see who's talking. White voters. This is who's on the panel representing white voters. Conservative, white, anti-black voters. This is who they have talking for that constituency. Just observation and very quickly a word from this broadcast sponsor foundational black american vote boycott you can also participate within this movement by contacting three minutes of empowerment yes three minutes of empowerment that is the black first puppet that you can hit up and you can get your handbills, flyers, uh, posters, and such, and go forth with the message of reparations. Shout out once again to Three Minutes of Black Empowerment, Black First. Now, back to the business at hand. This is why there is a vote boycott. 
because this is how they do it. Now, it's AAIP, people of color, BIPOC. But here this woman is up here speaking for, because what they're showing you is that the AAIP voters are way more in line with the old Dixiecrats, the ones that left the Democratic Party long ago. Yeah, those people are called Dixiecrats. I wonder, hmm, you know, dang. Well, you know, I just would wonder if you guys would have a clue on a person who was a former Dixiecrat. Her name would be Hillary Rodham Clinton. Yes, she's a uh, one of those. Also, though, this guy, this good fella who subscribes to the replacement theory. Yeah, this fella right here. He absolutely is a apprentice now master of under his uh former uh, uh teacher which would be segregationist strom thurman well this is what he has to say while talking to black so-called leaders this country is doomed it is doomed not just because of african americans but because by 2040, this country is going to be minority white European. You hear me? Minority white European. And you guys are going to have to start working more with Hispanics who make up a larger portion of the population. Y'all do. Yeah. So with him saying that, that lets you know what time it is. Now, why do you think that Asians are aligning with people like that? Preserving the race, maybe? One, one could possibly speculate that might be the case. But nonetheless, let's hear what this Asian woman has to say for conservative white voices. Where I think it was, it was a little over two-thirds of young Asian American voters still had not been contacted by a political party, political campaign, a candidate, an organization to get involved, right? And I think we're, we're starting to see a little bit of a shift here, though. I mean, campaigns, donors, they need to recognize that Asian American voters, they're not just in California, they're not just in New York City. We are everywhere. We're in the Midwest. We're in southern states like here in Texas, in North Carolina. I mean, we saw in Georgia. In 2020, again in 2021, where historical API turnout helped flip a congressional district from red to blue again in 2020, right? And so I, I think we're like seeing like this like unprecedented, you know, reports on anti-Asian violence, on hate crimes. Mm. Members of our community strongly feel like our own existence is political. And I think the challenge... Well, that's an interesting point. Our own existence is political. Very interesting statement, because usually when they talk about black folks that get into, uh, like for instance, the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, series, they had the sister there who had a, a, a pretty prominent role in there, and uh, all the suspected white supremacists went up in arms and took to the internet talking about how this was political, and Star Wars did not, they're ruining Star Wars by adding politics in it, which the Star Wars story is centered around politics at that. But nonetheless, um, they were complaining about the politics in the movie and the politics they're referring to is that there's just a black woman who is um, a prominent uh, character in the series. That was it. So I knew right then, she, oh, well, she must be foundational black American because if she was an immigrant, there would be nothing said. Well, now you're seeing when we have a bunch of people who are not foundational Black Americans in positions uh, just because they have Black skin does not mean they should speak for us. And if they absolutely, absolutely do not speak for us. Um, and, you know, we've already proven that here on this broadcast, uh, not this particular one, but we will before we go.
next year is that with API, with Asian American Pacific Islanders, as a voting electorate, I mean, we may only be three, four, maybe 5% of the state's voting electorate. And I promise y'all, like these numbers are gonna continue to grow, but that's where the difference in a win or a loss right. in November right. comes into play, yes. Okay. Okay. So now you see what time it is. No mistake. They are now trying to do everything possible to shift the conversation away from our agenda. And, you know, not that we didn't see this one coming because this is an act of desperation. So again, Foundation of Black Americans, be, um, you know, proud of yourselves that you have held the line well enough to say that, uh, you know, hey, we have made these people at least take notice and take a, a, an ear to our issues without somebody that they have ran out in front of us to run interference talking for us. And so that's something that, I, you know, y'all should be proud of. Uh, we all should be proud of because uh, it's something that is honorable to be in such a position to have done. So pat yourselves on the back, give yourselves a round of applause as well, because see, that's why you have to have these uh, episodes of the Tiffany Cross crossover. So you can see just how much these people are absolutely against foundational Black Americans' interests. Um, we cannot, we absolutely cannot rely on outsiders to represent us. We have to get these people up out of these positions. Uh, they have to be voted out or uh, vote boycotted out, whichever the situation calls for. Uh, if you're on the local level, depending on what's going on there, are the, if these people are not representing your interests and have been going with status quo, it is time for a change. They have the opportunity to talk different. They have it now. They hear the voices of the people. How much will you look like us combating our message? Because see, right now, then we'll have to ask you, are you a part of the Caribbean Black Caucus, the caucus that is housed within our Congressional Black Caucus that makes sure it put, puts the Caribbeans up uh, problems before foundational black americans you don't believe me well we brought that out on the space yesterday uh with my brother black alpha uh, we brought this out on my broadcast last friday and we are going to give you a refresher right now I'm Congresswoman Yvette D. Clark, and I proudly represent New York's 9th Congressional District in Central and South Brooklyn. As the founding co-chair of the House Caribbean Caucus and House Haiti Caucuses, and as a woman of Jamaican heritage, I'm very proud to convene this distinguished panel, a call to action addressing the needs of the Caribbean. I want to thank our president and CEO of the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, Tanya Vesey, our moderator, Claire Nelson, founder and president of the Institute of Caribbean Studies, our participants, Ambassador Dr. Eddie Green, Dr. Maria Myers Hamilton, Dr. Jan Eves Remy, and Kelly Silvera. Let me thank all the prolific individuals who have gathered with us and agreed to join me and my very distinguished colleague, Congresswoman Plaskett, to discuss the impact of COVID-19 on the Caribbean, renewable energy options, strategic partnerships, international trade, and the U.S. Caribbean policy solutions. The need for acute attention to Caribbean nations has heightened to a point where conversations must be had and substantive solutions must be created. As elected officials representing diverse and broad Caribbean communities, we hope to shed light 
on the importance of American assistance during this very uh, difficult time and the importance of partnerships adequately to address play, to address disparities that are plaguing Caribbean nations and their loved ones who live in America. Our diversity is our strength. And despite international borders, we are one community. And the Caribbean diaspora must be at the forefront of our thought processes. <laughs> okay, so you heard that. The Caribbean must be at the forefront. Forefront. Mm, 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 mm. These people absolutely have to go. They cannot no longer just sit there representing us with that type of attitude. We are losing uh, nonstop because of people like this. And that, there's just no benefit for us in that. Um, so I would hope that everybody understands the conditions that we are facing when we have the Tiffany Crosses coming up here, uh, down, downplaying Black Americans, foundational Black Americans' issues and our agenda as if it is so unimportant versus everyone else up there. So it's like, hey... Let's see if we can get some traction throwing anybody up in front of the foundational Black American argument. Um, and this is this is just another sad attempt um, at somebody. Because here's again, the AAIP, let's just keep it a buck. They do not influence the world culture as a whole. Foundational Black Americans only have that uh, uh, feather in their cap. So we, we can, you know, we don't even have to play with that. And that, that is something that we are very well aware of. So with that being said, um, you know, this, this has just been a, a real quick, again, uh, Beatzilla PDX official news break. And uh, this is titled, of course, the Tiffany Cross crossed over because she is absolutely crossed over into full-fledged treacherous ter territory. So her treasonous actions here should be rewarded with our our backs collectively um you know so that that is that is what it is you know the culture is on code and with that being said y'all uh can follow me on instagram facebook and twitter at beatzilla pdx you can follow me uh actually you can email me i'm sorry well no that's right you can also follow me on Melanated People at Michael Beatzilla Whitmore and Patreon at Beatzilla PDX Official. And then, of course, you can email me at ourrealtruth at gmail.com. That's ourrealtruth at gmail.com. And then if you feel so inclined to put some money in the bucket by way of donation, you definitely can at uh, Cash App, dollar sign, Beatzilla PDX. That is Cash App, dollar sign, Beatzilla PDX. Of course, we also have uh, PayPal, and that is Zilla Music. That is Z I L L A M U Z A K. And with that being said, family, we uh, will have uh, no live stream tomorrow uh, for the midweek report because I have to go to a CD release party for uh, my partner in, in rhyme and funk um, music, that is. Ariette Award uh, for her CD release. Y'all have heard some of the music here on this channel. Uh, so we are celebrating her uh, album release tomorrow. So with that being said, of course, I will not be live. But for those of you who have not known, um, me and brother Black Alpha Network did a Twitter space on Monday. And as it seems, um, you know, we've done two of these now. Uh, and, and it looks like, you know, people are, are asking for us to continue doing it. So with that being said, uh, tomorrow night, I will be airing uh, the last space that we did just this Monday. And uh, so it's about uh, four hour, it's close to four hours. So, you know, it'll start an hour earlier than my uh, traditional broadcast. Uh, but you guys, you know, I'll be in the chat 
periodically, um, you know, because of course I'll be in in the mix of uh, of everything going on here around this record. Um, but with that being said, uh, shout out to my uh, co-host, um, brother Black Alpha Network. Today is actually his birthday, and uh, yeah, so y'all y'all will really enjoy that space. Uh, it is about um, the question of is a vote boycott the best option? And of course, you know, my answer is yes. So with that being said, I hope y'all have a blessed one. Make sure you tune in, uh, follow Black Alpha, and also uh, follow both of us because um, you are going to see uh, something on that end of things as well. Because um, it looks like, you know, hey, man, if the people call for it, man, you know, you got to, got to, got to do what's needed, you dig? And again, of course, we enjoy it. Um, we enjoy talking to y'all. Um, all of y'all bringing that good energy. So I uh, hope to see y'all Monday once again at noon on Twitter. Um, so again, go follow my, my partner, uh, Black Alpha Network. Uh, give him a shout out today. This Today is his birthday. And, uh, you know, I hope y'all enjoy the Twitter space that uh, is going to run tomorrow night. And uh, y'all have a blessed one. Stay safe, stay vigilant, stay alive. And as always, stay away from the devil. <laughs> Can you dig it? Black first. Shout out to y'all. If you're tired of being censored on social media, join 60s.net. It's black owned, black operated, and black moderated. And we make sure it stays a safe space for us to talk about all things black culture. We also got some cool gear like the F. Jim Cotton Crew Neck, the Fearless Ancestors Tee, hats, and more. Check us out at sixzeros.net. Hey girl, why are you so sad? I just got banned from Twitter again. Should have been on sixzeros.net. Ah. Uh.